Good morning, and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Jenna. I'm Brandy. And she's our new co-host. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so we are very excited to have Brandy join us uh, for the morning show. Um, we're going to have a really good time this morning talking about, what are we talking about? We're talking about 2019 print and design trends. Right. So as you guys know, for the most part, I love talking about trends. So anyway, I could talk about trends. I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> so usually I'm always talking about apparel trends and how you can bring those in house and print them. But today we're going to focus it specifically on, uh, printing. So some printing finishes where to print them, and also what design elements mm -hmm. are trending for 2019. So I see some of you guys commenting in. Hi, Buffy, Brian, and Pat. Thank you, guys. Uh, yes, comment in. Tell us where you're from. We always love seeing where everybody is joining us from. Um, but before we dive into our main topic, we do have um, some announcements. So we're going to start, as always, with this week's look of the week. Right, so this was submitted by Kate from Lilac Graphics and Design. And I chose this one specifically because she's using um, a design trend mm -hmm. and also a finished trend. So let's start with the left one. All right, so this is a side-aligned typography, which is a graphic design that we're seeing trending a lot in um, design makeup. So artwork, whenever you're creating uh, mm -hmm. your di designs using different elements and cute typography to make it unique and uh, personable to your customer. All right, so we see one trend there. And then in the right, we also see some distressing. All right, so in the comments, she mentioned that this is um, actually printable glitter or sublimated glitter, I guess yeah. I should say. So I was shocked to see that because of all the detail in the distressing but it I looks wonderful. It does. Uh, so great job on that, Kate. Uh, you hit two of the trends that we're actually going to be talking about today. So I love to see that our customers are already incorporating mm -hmm. that stuff and offering it to their customers. So great job, Kate. Um, other than that, trade shows. So I actually just got back from Minnesota. Um, it was the DAC show, the Decorated Apparel Expo. And, and it was a great show. Mm -hmm. I actually love DAC's. It's very personable. I get to actually sit talk with the customers, they attend the education, and it's so fun because you get to spend some after hours with them. They had this bowling thing going on. It was it was a lot cool. of fun. So um, it was great seeing everybody. I talked to a few people that actually mm -hmm. joined the Facebook Lives, so it was nice meeting with them and seeing how... <laughs> Did you sign any autographs while you were there? <laughs> no, not this time, <laughs> but I have been asked before. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, so DAX Minnesota was fun. Education was really, really well received. It's a mouthful. Um, and I don't was know. Was it set like, up a little different? It was. We were on the show floor as opposed to in the classroom, and the education was free. Um, so people really enjoyed that. And then um, if you aren't able to attend any of the trade shows and take advantage of the education that we're doing there, uh, we do monthly workshops, mm -hmm. right? So typically they're on Wednesday. Some flood into Thursday just because of the content. Um, it can be a little overwhelming, so we like to split it up a little right. bit. Uh, this month, though, it'll be the first time that we're doing it on a Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, so it's actually this Saturday at all of our locations. All right, so you can see the locations listed there on the left-hand side. And we're going to be doing heat printing 101 and 201. So it's actually an all-day workshop if you're going to be attending both classes. Uh, we're going to throw in some lunch for you guys if you're attending both. So we'll go from 10 to 1, mm -hmm. um, specific to where you're located, obviously. So here it'll be uh, Eastern time. Um, but we will go 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. We'll have a lunch break from 1 to 2, and we'll start back up at 2 and go to 5. Um, and I think it's great that we are offering a Saturday class specifically because people are always working Monday through Friday. Right. They have a hard time getting out of whatever production mm -hmm. that they're in. So I think Saturday will be a little bit laid back. Maybe they won't be taking calls for the shop or whatnot. Exactly. So yeah. I think it will be really nice. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think you, you will get the most out of it if you do attend both classes. For sure. Because Rosemary it, like, commented. She said, you did a great job presenting at DAX. Love your presentation. Thank you, Rosemary. Nice. Thank you. That means I am doing something right. Doing right. <laughs> All right. So um, let's go ahead and jump into the discussion. All right. Let's do it. All right. So 
The first print trend that we're going to be talking about is uh, retro prints. My favorite. Yeah, so either throwback to some people or just a vintage look. Um, mm -hmm. And I have an example here, actually, that we show in the trends class um, at the trade shows. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is a ringer tee, which was a staple for a long time. Ringer tee is just your white uh, solid body, and then it has the red piping on the sleeves mm -hmm. and on the collar. So that's your typical ringer tee. What we did to take this ringer tee and make it even more retro was utilize a retro font. Right, and the tennis short and the tube socks are also <laughs> going to be worn with this. Right. All right, so um, not only did we do that, but we used a lot of those retro colors that make this pattern really pop off of the garment. So, um, and by pattern, I mean just the color way that we used here. We printed this on printable glitter. So this is actually a digitally printed graphic. And um, it's a very simple application. So this is actually a tri-blend t-shirt. So it makes it really soft and lightweight. Mm -hmm. Not like your typical ringer tee, uh, which is usually 100% cotton and a little more stiff to wear mm -hmm. uh, in the past. So um, uh, that being that this applies at a nice low temperature, we're able to print this successfully without uh, compromising the finish of the garment with a scorch mark or a heat print right. box. And you can really easily do this uh, with just a cutter. Right. So if you don't have a printer cutter system, this would be easily uh, done with uh, just some artwork, um, you know. Exactly. Yeah, so you can get multicolor without printable glitter, uh, depending on how much time you want to take to weed and heat right. apply each layer. Uh, but printable glitter is a service as well. So if you're not printing in-house with an eco-solvent, solvent, or latex printer, uh, which are all the compatible printers with that media, uh, you can send us the artwork and we'll send it to you ready to heat apply. So keep that option in mind as well. Um, but yeah, so retro prints, a, a lot of unique colors that you can utilize to make it unique, uh, and fonts. Even so, the big names, I think, are mm -hmm. coming out with the, the retro and, and the vintage. Um, for me, it's throwback. For my daughter, it's retro and vintage, whether it's on a sweatshirt or a t-shirt or even a, you know, a bag, a tote bag. But even the, the larger shoe manufacturers, Nike, Adidas, they both uh, uh, launched a, a retro shoe this year. So yeah, you exactly. You really see it coming back. Yeah. All right, so where can we source fonts for retro style? That's a great question. Defont.com. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about Defont.com a lot on our website or on our show. And the website I have brought up on my screen here because they have a retro category. All right, so under all of their tabs, all right, so they have fancy, foreign, techno, bitmap, et cetera. Mm -hmm. They have a retro selection here, right? And you can just scroll and you can see they have up to 54 pages of retro type of fonts that you can utilize. And you can download that right into CADWORKS Live. Right, exactly, Jenna? yes. As cool. long as it is a TTF file, which is a true type font, you can upload it right into CADWORKS Live. So the type of file that you want to avoid is OTF, that's open type font. And that is not what is compatible with CADWORKS Live because it's not actually going to have a vector line that is good for printing or mm -hmm. cutting, et cetera. All right, so um, a lot of retro designs on there. One thing you also want to uh, be aware of with Defont.com is, hi, Daryl. Thanks for commenting in. Hi, Patty and Tabitha as well. Um, so one thing you want to take into consideration is a... Um, Copyright? Where was I going with this? People commented in and I got real excited. Well, some are copyrighted or, or you have to pay personal for or whatever. Use. Personal use. Personal yeah. use. That's the word I was looking for. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, personal use means that you're only going to, you can still use it, but you might not be able to use it for uh, your t-shirts to sell. Just to sell it. Right. right. But defont.com does have a donating option on there and a contact to the creator of the font, the designer. Mm -hmm. So you can actually get permission from them. So I'm not going to say that you can't if it's personal use only. You can definitely contact them, donate to them. They may allow you to use it for business use. Uh, but not all of them are personal use. I'm just saying be aware that that is an option on there. So just make sure before right. you use it to sell something that you are making sure that it's not. And it will save so much time. Exactly. So much time. And they're free, Most which is them. a big deal. Yeah. All right. So you were mentioning earlier that there is uh, another way to get fonts. 
Um, I just put in, uh, when I was Googling around, um, I just put in uh, the vintage or retro typography and several uh, came up, you know, 49, you know, free fonts or whatever. Didn't really dig into the websites too much, but there are a ton out there. And it would say, I know personally, it saves so much time. Okay. Yeah. So other than retro designs, let's talk about a retro print Patterns. that we offer known as 90s notebook. All right. So this takes me back to my childhood. This was a pattern <laughs> that was often incorporated into my outfits because my mom loved outfitting me as a child. Uh, so hey, you're so cute. this design was used a lot in my apparel. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this, I kind of was scared because I hated it <laughs> whenever I was little. But I love incorporating this into design work because of the colors utilized. All right, so it has a lot of the bright colors in it, that old teal that was yeah. really popular. Right. And um, what's nice about this is we show you what popular colorways this pattern is available in, but... You can change them. You right. Can, if you're looking for a different color or you have a specific color that you uh, need to be in that, you can change those colors. Which is ideal for if you are printing for schools. Schools, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even local businesses, if they want a pattern or something full color that incorporates their colors in it, um, that is a good option as well. What's nice about the patterns, if um, you can't find it in our categories because we offer so many, we have a search bar now. I like that. So you can type in the pattern that you're looking for. So if you're looking for 90s notebook, you can type it into the search bar. Uh, if you're just browsing, it is under the expressions category. Okay. Uh, so first one in expressions, but I love that pattern and using it in design artwork because it really pops. It really does. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if you guys remember jams or not, that's pretty much what they look like. Uh, and things. I will say, um, Nike throwback. Oh, yeah. Some of their throwback sweatshirts um, has that back. pattern used in their logo. Not the exact one, but something very, very similar. So you can really recreate that for your right. customers that love that throwback look. Well, that's why it came so popular is in 1983, that's when Nike launched this type of art and, and these colors. So that's, you know, going back to the roots for Nike for their uh, design team. Great. So if you're just joining us, we are going over design trends right now, and then we'll get into the print and finish uh, trends for 2019. So we just did retro inspired uh, design trends. Obviously, we're just scratching the surface with that. There are a lot more ways that you can incorporate retro designs. Just do some research, type in retro prints, graphic mm -hmm. tees, retro graphic tees, vintage, et cetera, and all of that inspiration is going to pop up for you, for you to use. Mm -hmm. All right. The next one is repeating text. All right. So this is one that I really like because it is simple, but it covers the whole shirt. So yeah. if you're just using basic fonts, you can cover the whole shirt by just repeating the text. All right, so here I'm using rose gold metallic and rose gold glitter for a girly type of spirit wear shirt. I love this shirt also. Shout out to Cavio for this shirt. Uh, but this really takes simple text to the next level and makes it more of a graphic tee than just random text on a shirt. Right. And right. it's definitely a great way to upsell the look. Exactly. Yeah, and I just love the way the glitter flake and the rose gold really pop off of the garment yeah, with they this. They complement each other nice. Yes. Right, so that is repeating text. So you can imagine all of the different things that you can do with that. Um, I saw where one of our customers known as Gandhi Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, Gandhi Inc. is known for creating really nice spirit wear designs, and they are actually incorporating the repeating text as a background and then dropping nice. something layered on top of it, mm -hmm. such as like maybe the school letter mm -hmm. or something like that. And But it'll say the school name behind it. It is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Very cool. I love it. Uh, but that is just another example of people incorporating that into their artwork. Mm -hmm. um, so love that. All right. Other than that, we also have design trends. Okay. So 90s. What about the 70s and 80s? Tammy, good point. <laughs> You're right. Here we go. She said we're just babies. You're right, I am. But I remember the 90s the most. 
All right, so um, tie-dye. Okay, so tie-dye was a staple in shirts. Uh, it was an all-over print on yeah. a shirt, but we're seeing it incorporated into designs by just using a tie-dye pattern. All right, so this tie-dye pattern, all right, I obviously love patterns. I try to talk about them all the time. Uh, but this was brought over whenever Imprintables, our sister company, joined stalls under the umbrella, and now it's all one. Mm -hmm. all right, so this is under our Spectra category. All right, so if you are looking at the different patterns, this is under that category. So tie-dye, you guys brought on... Um, and Imprintables brought on a while ago because it was so popular, and we're seeing it resurface. Right? Oh, for so sure. So this is being added a lot more, right? So being able to utilize that in your design trends is really cool. Well, the but tie dye is really coming back in just the mainstream market uh, with with retailers. Uh, it had a presence on the 2019 Fashion Week in New York City, so that mm -hmm. was cool. So, you know, the, the tie-dye garments, anything tie-dye oriented, it, it really is is making its comeback. Right, and I don't that, think it ever left. I mean, it never <laughs> left for me personally. So It left for me a little bit, but it's coming <laughs> back. <laughs> All right, so um, I have a company brought up known as Paws. All right, this company prints apparel so that they can raise money for um, non-sheltered dogs, so homeless dogs and cats, all right? So they're raising money for that organization and they are doing so well. And I remember, I, I love the way they're using tie-dye for this because they're using bright neon colors and mm -hmm. they're just dro dropping their logo on the back in white and it's really popping off the garment still. Even though this t-shirt is so busy mm -hmm. with the tie-dye, it's really unique and I love the way that they're profiting and with I this think, and raising money with it. I think everybody's mm -hmm. attracted to tie-dye. Mm -hmm. Like kids, um, guys, girls, it, we're, we're all okay with, with wearing tie-dye. Yeah. Dell says he remembers the, is that say 60s or 80s? I can't the tell. The 60s. 60s, okay. Yeah. All right, so I am <laughs> interested in knowing what was most popular in your era, right? So okay. comment that in. What was most popular in your era? It had to have been like the jams that MC Hammer wore. Okay. I remember in high school, we would be wearing these, these huge type of balloon pants, but they tapered down. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody remembers MC Hammer and he would dance. Yeah. And then he had those big balloon pants on. Um, and then some of them got really crazy and had, had those. And I actually had a pair of um, gym pants, spandex, that were this down the <laughs> side. Brian says, the first pattern you showed looks like something by Saved by the Belt. Yes, yeah. it does. It really does. Tie-dye, camo. What is that? Houndstooth? Okay. Um, and plaid never goes out of style. You are right. True. Plaid is still very popular. Well, the buffalo plaid is huge. Oh, yeah. Well, it was last year for Christmas and a couple of Christmases ago. But it was like Jelly shoes everywhere. and jelly bracelets. That fits me. Yes. The jelly, jelly shoes, shoes are coming back. back. I actually had a pair of jelly high heels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Those are interesting. I'm sure that that was nice. <laughs> they were. <laughs> okay, so let's move along. So we just did tie-dye. Um, and now we're into the split color and text, which is really fitting the now for sports mm -hmm. apparel. Uh, so I noticed this first whenever the NFL um, – well, the season started back up, basically. And the coaches and everybody on the sidelines were utilizing this type of split text effect. And I fell in love with it immediately because it really popped off of the garment whenever I saw it. Uh, obviously, I noticed it with the Steelers because that's the football team that uh, I support, mm. local Pittsburghy. All right, so um, we have Glitter Flake and Metallic utilized for this split text effect for a softball team. So obviously we did the girly colors and the girly finish for a softball team, but you can imagine all of the different colorways you could use and all of the different finishes that you could use right. with this. Right, so schools, or right. if it's a time of year, if it's like, uh, you know, a 4th of July game or whatever. Right, and this, um, this effect really takes a basic text to the next level. Sure. And that's why I love it because it's simple, it's easy to create in your design mm -hmm. setup, and it will... Just, I mean, well, it, it definitely for kicks it up a notch. If there was, you know, something that just had the Oxford softball with no, you know, fancy graphic design, I would pay definitely five dollars more, ten dollars more, whatever, and get the the cooler one. Right. 
Right. And um, it, it, you, you can take it to the next level with mixed media like we did or just with two color. Anything that's going to give it kind of that color blocking effect or just more color to add a little more mm -hmm. to something basic, then you're going to be able to profit more with it. So just mm -hmm. comes some considerations um, of how you can utilize the split text effect. Uh, special letter formatting. And this comes down to the wrap text. Right, so I noticed this um, pop up more last year, but we're still seeing it trend into 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, that is up on my screen now. All right, so this is a prime example of special uh, letter formatting where you're taking one word, but you're spacing it out and making it unique so that it's not something just basic. So again, like the split text effect, we're taking basic text and manipulating them mm -hmm. to make it unique and something that really catches a consumer's eye. Uh, I would rather purchase something like this. Obviously, I maybe a, a logo added. So you can see that the logo is added to the softball. Obviously, the decorator is using this to promote what they can do. So you can obviously customize this with another logo. Um, but that is one way of uh, using special formatting text. Right. Also, here's another example of you that see being that utilized. Yes. Yeah. All right. And then um, we also have side align typography, which I actually skipped over. So I'm going to pop back up to that. All right. So this is what we were talking about with um, the uh, submitter, Kate, uh, who submitted how her design. Her softball. Um, right. With the softball and the text. So the clip art was off to the side and the text was right there mm -hmm. on um, the other side, all right? So in this photo, you can see that it's layered. So this is still achievable with heat transfer vinyl, but you made a really good point earlier that it would be a really cool look with screen print transfers it would as be. well. Uh, but this is just making it really unique to take a, a graphic tee to the next level and use the element of the clip art nice and big with the text. Mm -hmm. And it kind of reminds me of how we used to do it with knockout design. So we always wanted the clip art nice and big along with the text. Mm -hmm. So it was punched through the center. So this is another unique way where you can take clip art and text and make it one for an overall piece. So I really like the side aligned text. It's something that I want to start trying in design software. Um, I do see your comments about doing split text tutorial. That is something that we always get asked about, and I'm actually making a video on that tomorrow. I was going to say, you should have a video. So stay tuned. Um, I am going to do a CADWorks tutorial on that. We're videoing it tomorrow, and uh, we will obviously let you guys know whenever it is up on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you always get the updates, but just know that that is coming. Okay, so um, that is the uh, basics of some of the design trends that we're seeing for 2019. And those are just some of the few. Um, there's obviously so many different trends out there mm -hmm. and people uh, utilizing things in different ways. Um, but those are the top ones I really wanted to talk about. Uh, so how do you make these designs work for you and the niches and different markets that you are working with? Well, it really comes down to being creative in yeah. who you are offering your finishes mm -hmm. with. So you want to consider fonts. You want to consider different design elements because those are all things. Because you can have a really cool garment. You can have a really cool saying on there. But what's going to make it stand out to your customer? Mm -hmm. How you have the text on there? Mm -hmm. What type of elements you are using? All right. So being able to incorporate all of these different ones into the type of niche or market that you are decorating I think just being unique, I think, you know, sometimes people don't spend the time on the graphics aspect of, say, the, the, the fundraiser, the function, or whatever, and it's just like a basic tee, mm -hmm. and it, these are all just basic t-shirts or garments with just font, but it's just how the artwork is being executed that makes it so much different and, yeah, and we actually really appeals found, to people. Right, and we actually found a really great example of this in a graphic that Under Armour has on their website right now. Uh, so this is obviously the Texas Tech for the Final Four, mm -hmm. and they have it being promoted. But, um, and they're incorporating a lot of these elements in their graphic tees as well. So you can see the really unique text that they use down here for Unleash Chaos and the boom that they have in the back and all of these different elements and effects it 
creates motivation, it creates competitiveness, and also it makes people feel confident when they're wearing it and supporting their team. Absolutely. Because right? they could just have the Texas Tech logo on there, but this is something that is adding more element to it and more profitability and makes a person want to buy it right so that they can wear it and support their team absolutely right. i mean that's why we wear clothes right right it makes our clothes make us feel a certain way exactly <laughs> all right so um that sums up the design side of everything now let's quickly dive into some of the popular finishes that are trending in apparel now all right, so our first one is dimension. So I can never stop talking about dimension because mm -hmm. it is um, a good way to add profitability by making something pop off the garment as opposed to just being a flat uh, type of print. Right, absolutely. All right, so one way that uh, we are doing this well now is with flex style. Flex style is huge. It has a very 3D textured look, mm -hmm. and you can see even within that it has texture. All right, so you can see those little elements in there with the metallic pink. Those are all um, little um, perforations in there that right, give they're it like more little texture. Or... Right. So it's popping off of the garment, and well, not only because of the type of transfer it is, because it's 3D. I'm actually going to try to turn that to the side so you can see that it's. And what's cool about that flex style is that when you have that emblem, you can. The, the types of uh, texture is really unlimited. And looking at that, that, that logo right there and having that tree smooth and metallic, mm -hmm. it just makes it completely pop. Um, so definitely takes the, the Flexile emblems, take whatever you're putting it on, whether it be a garment, a jacket, a hat, and just takes it up to the next level. It's right. unbelievable. Flex style, um, we offer actually a sample pack, and that is where I recommend starting. It's yes. only $35, and you get that a you sample to heat apply, a sample four. to use um, on a hard surface because it comes in a, a pressure-sensitive mm -hmm. adhesive, and you get the cover sheet that you need to heat apply it accurately without smashing that dome effect. And that's a $20 that value. So even if you buy the $35 sample pack, you're able to play with it, you show it to your customers, um, and that, that orange pad, you have to have it to have that successful application. It's $20. So there you go. Next, we have SimStitch. So SimStitch we talk a lot about because it is such a unique way to uh, use either pre-cut numbers or get a custom look for the shirts that you're offering your customers. So this one, we have uh, done dimension two different ways. So we have the SimStitch as the background. So SimStitch is a twill heat transfer that we offer. It has a laser etched finish so on the edges. Fray. Exactly, fray. exactly, does not fray. But that laser etch on the side is a, uh, simula we simulate a zigzag stitch mm -hmm. there. All right, so. Um, so it's embroidery with just a heat press. Exactly, so you have that embroidered look without actually having to ever thread a needle, mm -hmm. right? And then we just layered the pre-cut glitter on there as well to kind of give it that uh, sewn look that you can get with a rip away applique. So if you are doing embroidery. I absolutely love that look. The rip away applique? Uh, the same stitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the rip away applique, if you are embroidering, this is that same type of effect, but you've actually embroidered the edges and ripped away the glitter flake. All right, so you are getting true embroidery with the glitter finish. Now mm -hmm. keep in mind, if you are embroidering heat transfer vinyl, you still have to hit it with a heat press. So if you're just embroidering, make sure that you are uh, curing the adhesive after you embroider. Right. And just think of how much time that saves. And it's it's quite cost effective to have that internal be right. the, the glitter and it's heat such transfer a, vinyl a is, wow factor for whoever is, is looking at these type of garments especially when it comes to the Greek wear. Really popular with the Greek wear. Right. And cheerleading uniforms. Mm -hmm. All right, athletic wear. So athletic wear, I'm always going to promote premium plus high tack here. All right, low temp application, so you're not getting the scorch mark, mm -hmm. but you also have that four-way stretch. So I'm going to pop this off of here and stretch it so that you can see how nice this is. All right, so. I was really impressed with the stretchability mm -hmm. that the premium plus has. All right, so typically if you do this with any other type of heat transfer vinyl, it wants the popper crack. Right. All right, so that, Bunch. and it's so soft and smooth. It has a really matte finish, true matte finish. So you can see that it's not shiny at all mm -hmm. when the light hits it. It is the closest thing to a screen print ink that you can get with heat transfer vinyl. And it is so soft. It is so soft. soft. It's like better. <laughs> 
All right, so um, then we have silicone, which is a popular, and I wanted to throw this in here because uh, it's not only dimensional, but it's also a sport type of heat transfer vinyl. It blocks dye migration, the sublimated dyes, which are hard to block, mm -hmm. and it has a raised textured effect. So if you are familiar with uh, Under Armour and Nike and the type of finish that they use for those logos, same finish. Mm -hmm. It has that rubberized raised effect and it's still nice and lightweight though, even it though is. it's yeah, like, feel it feels nice on a 100% polyester. Yeah, it doesn't that. feel thick and heavy. Michael asked, what was the one called, the stretch one? It is premium plus high tack. All right, so we do offer a high tack and a low tack option, depending on how intricate you're going to get with your designs. I like right? the low tack for really ripping and tearing if you're doing names and numbers, mm -hmm. just because you can just really rip and tear into it. It's right. easy to weed. Yeah, right. Special effect, obviously, is still trending. Anything that's going to take that design and pop it off of the garment. So mm -hmm. you have an option there on the hat. Um, it is the flock. Flock, mm -hmm. too. So not only is that a special effect, but it's also dimension. So you see how everything's relating back to dimension mm -hmm. because dimension's so popular now. And then that split text effect that I showed you earlier with the glitter and metallic and glitter flake on glitter. Right, so I know I wasn't going to talk about apparel trends today, but I have to shout out Jay America because this glitter hoodie is so popular and I see it everywhere. They I've been glitter seeing glitter t-shirts, glitter t-shirts, well. hoodies, joggers, anything. It has a metallic thread woven throughout it. You can still apply heat transfer vinyl to it. It's not going to mm -hmm. compromise what you can put on it. All right, so uh, glitter on glitter is very popular, especially for dance, cheer, Greek right. play, or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, next print trend. All right, so, so far we did dimensional, athletic, special effect, and now we're into distressed. You want to tell That's us about what you have over there? Yes. <laughs> distressed is, is my personal favorite, um, whether it be on a garment or a bag, a hat. Uh, but these, this is a really cool product that we have in our services. Um, I wish I had the black and gray one to show you because you can see the detail a little bit better. But basically, this is just a distressed letter. Um, you can go ahead and, um, you know, what's that, um, what's that thing called? It's the, the pattern. Oh, the alignment. Yeah, the mm -hmm. alignment. So they're just free-floating. You can go ahead and align the letters um, to be able to apply on a garment. Or yeah, it's a, layout. it's a lettering layout, layout guide, yeah. actually, and it comes with mask strips. So that once you have it laid out mm -hmm. on there, you just put that mask down. It picks everything up that you uh -huh. have lined out, and then you can and then apply he, it. He transfer it. But I thought this was a really cool product in our services, um, which is just a distressed applique. Yeah, it's actually Again, a Chino just twill. A, yeah, the Chino twill. Mm -hmm. And it applies with just a heat press. Mm -hmm. It's pre-sewn, so it looks like it's embroidered, but you're just heat applying it. Yeah. Distressed is also uh, well achieved with screen print transfer. All right, so this is goof proof that we have on this um, worn t-shirt. All right, this t-shirt is actually from Bella Canvas. I actually love the fill of this. And the screen print on there um, with the distressed effect that really plays well into this uh, worn type of style of garment uh, plays well into this. All right, so they have different um, distressed effects on transferexpress.com in the uh, Easy View Designer that you can apply to anything. Uh, any types of their screen prints. And you actually mm -hmm. have some samples there. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, definitely take advantage of all the, the samples that we create uh, for you guys to get to get some things in your hand uh, to, to look at and to work with. But this is a, uh, this is the hot split uh, sample. So it's try before you buy type of thing. And it gives you uh, a couple of different transfers to work with. And again, these are both kind of distressed transfers because uh, this is something that you really can't accomplish um, with a, a cutting and weaving process um, effectively or production friendly anyways. <laughs> Kate managed and it looked awesome it, but yeah. I bet it was a hard time weaving that. Okay so uh, we went over dimensional athletic special effect distressed and uh, print placement. So I have one garment and why I love talking about print placements because it's so easy to achieve with a heat press. It is. Right. Uh, your heat presses, if you are getting from Hotronics, have the ability to mm -hmm. interchange 
the platens, mm -hmm. which is the platform that you are loading your garment onto so that you can successfully get a flat surface and apply your heat transfer with the upper heating element. All right, so left chest, yeah, the, we're doing left chest all day. four by four. But um, this is a really unique placement, right? So we were able to thread the hood onto a six by 10 platen and apply the hood with the uh, business name, all right? So this is just one of many print placements that you can get that are unique and mm -hmm. take your offering to the next level, mm -hmm. all right? So the hood placement is really unique. Sleeve placements, wraparound prints, anything that isn't your standard left chest logo or full front or full back. Yoke placements, I'm noticing, are really popular and even sleeve placements. Mm -hmm. So even those are those are pretty standard, they are still taking something to the next level. Right. Adding more profitability. I mm -hmm. always say the more areas of the garment you can print, the more profit you're going to make. Absolutely. And there is, a, I believe, an ebook uh, that you can download on the website that uh, shows you all of the different placements and then recommends some different sizing for the artwork. Because I actually had to refer to it a couple of times myself when I was looking for, um, you know, the, the yoke placement and, and things like that. So it's nice to have that downloaded on your computer. Michael just added a really good point because um, a customer actually came to one of the workshop Wednesdays and brought me a pattern that had a dirt effect um, and they cut a softball out of it or a mm -hmm. baseball and it was so cool. So they're actually taking a like uh, dirt type of print okay. and putting it on a standard pattern and doing kind of like a distressed like old worn type of mm. look with that and it is really cool. cool you actually have to see it in person to understand it yeah but i know what you're talking about michael and i, I i'm glad that you um, mentioned that because it is trending all right so um can you recommend a heat press for someone just starting out yes brian uh we do have some uh, startup heat presses um well, i always recommend the auto clam depending on the type of investment that you want but we do different packages that allow you to uh, get started with heat printing pillows, cover sheets, the press, and then you have the option of starting in three different stages with the auto clam. And you really need those packages, I think, because just starting out with the heat press, you want to heat press all of these different things, but you don't you don't know how. And when you start using your heat press and heat pressing all these different types of garments, you're like, oh, oh man, how am I going to heat press this? So the accessories are so valuable when it comes to being successful, you know, with right. those different placements. All right. So I actually popped over to the auto plan because we do have one here. And since we're talking about it, we might as well sure. show it why if it's not? in here. Yeah, why not? Uh, so this auto clam has an auto open feature. So once I close this down, it's not on right now. I guess I could turn it on. Uh, but as soon as I lock it down, it's going to auto open for me as soon as it counts down the amount of seconds that my transfer is on mm -hmm. my shirt for. So right. let's just type, talk hypothetically So what if here. the phone rings? Oh my God, Jenna, go get the phone. It's a customer. What are you going to do? What's going to happen? I can leave. Your press is going to pop up and your shirt's going to wait for you. <laughs> Great example, Brandy. <laughs> All right, so it comes with your standard 16 by 20, and these are interchangeable. So these are the platens that we're talking about, being able to pop right out of the bottom and interchange for different sizes. So if you're familiar with embroidery at all and how embroiderers use different sized hoops mm -hmm. so that they can um, isolate one area of the garment that they want to personalize, same way you're using a different platen in order to do so, right? So I like to compare those two because you do need different sizes of platens so that you can get certain accessories customized uh, or even different sizes of garments, even as small as onesies. Absolutely. All right, so we do have different platens that you can use. Um, so you can print beyond just apparel. You can do bags. There's a lot of different things that you can do. All right, so we have been on here for a total of 40 minutes. So that means we are... 15 over? minutes over. <laughs> That's okay. It's been fun. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining. I did see some more comments uh, come in, but I will revisit the broadcast once we are done here and answer any remaining uh, questions that we do have. But thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. It was great having you guys and you for yeah, the first time. Yeah, it was time. great. I loved it. All right, awesome. All right, see you guys next time.